Are we going to be going for the Hail Mary here? Hi there, it's Brent Horn here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. And What I mean here is definitely going to talk a little more on some updates on the Canadian Football League, the CFL here. And uh, you definitely got to wonder, maybe there could still be a Hail Mary in terms of having a 2020 season here. As there's definitely, CFL's been in the news recently, mostly on, you know, obviously with the global pandemic, with the COVID-19 or coronavirus here, and especially when all leagues were paused here because of this pandemic, that the Canadian Football League definitely, definitely takes a lot more of a year because their business model is definitely more revenue-driven by ticket sales and, uh, and the league's definitely not getting any revenue and potentially not going to get any revenue for the rest of the year here that due to these government restrictions here that the commissioner of the CFL, Randy Abrogi, seeking government assistance, government funding, or government intervention, depending on what you want to call it, that the league was looking for $30 million initially and potentially up to $150 million over the next couple of seasons. And the league definitely was proposing on being more partnered with the government of Canada going forward here, if they were to get funding here. However, the other layer that got added here is that uh, the Players Association wasn't really aware of what the league was going to do here. And the government did say, and understandably, because I see it on their end, that the government says we're not going to intervene until the players are definitely have their say. And apparently, if you look through various articles, mostly on TSN and Three Down Nation here, that the president of the Players Association, Solomon Alminian, who is placed for the Sketch Ruffers now, mostly was known for playing with the BC Lions here. I know he did say after when the pause button was pressed on the uh, sports everywhere, and definitely we're wondering about what's the future for the CFL there, and we thought maybe they still have some time, and now it's looking like time is definitely not on their side here, and best case scenario, I still say, is maybe, you know, a partial season, and I'll get to those points later here, but uh, Solomon Alamania did tell the players so they prepare for worst case scenario here. And another layer you can add to this is that uh, a lot of the players that play in the Canadian Football League are either American or now with partnerships with uh, you know, for the Mexican Football League and some leagues over in Europe there is that's what the CFL has been trying to do to expand its exposure here that we have some global players here and definitely some governments tweeted out saying about well, how are we going to give assistance to Americans living in the U.S. here and and you know, some players fought back and say, well, gee, it's our, we're employed by a Canadian and we live in Canada, despite the fact that being American, I have to get too political here. But uh, that's definitely been one, one you know, storyline that's been coming out of this here. I still think personally, and I actually would have no problem, it's easy for me to say as a sports fan, but I pay for other things that uh, don't support, so it's even for all taxpayers here. But, uh, you know... I definitely think there still have to be some kind of agreement here between the league's players and the governor, especially how much the league has been, how long the league's been in Canada and how much it means to uh, other cities, especially if they host the Grey Cup here. And I'm almost going to have to say that if the league continues on here, because next year's Grey Cup in 2021 will be in Hamilton here, you almost got to wonder, well, Saskatchewan hosted in 2022 now because uh, they were scheduled to, scheduled to uh, host it this year here, but, you know, with uh, banning on gatherings and fans, and who knows where it will be then that Saskatchewan will not get the full benefit of hosting the Grey Cup and the festival there, but uh, getting to the next point here that there might be a Hill Mary that there could still potentially be a season here because when Selma and Mini apparently, if you read reports online here, that uh, he's a uh, Said he had some productive uh, talks with the uh, levels of government on government intervention because now the government is hearing from the players' side on how they're going to be affected by it because uh, the 
most of the money that has to go to the players here because, you know, they're employed by, you know, said teams here and also the operating costs here. You also got to wonder how we could salvage a season here because you're hearing that the CFL now is leaning towards maybe having another hub city option here. I know Major League Baseball is really the only major league at this point here that is talking about still playing games in their home city I say with the exception of the Blue Jays here just because of the international border restriction here but uh, it sounds like that maybe the CFL is trying to uh, because I almost think the CFL needs to have some games and at least some television revenue from TSN just to maybe weather the storm here and it still sounds like they're definitely going to need some government intervention so they can go through this and continue, you know, into the future here to hopefully have games here. But it sounds like maybe, and that's the other thing I was thinking of too, that uh, if there was going to be a CFL season, there'll be a couple hub cities here. And I'm almost thinking, well, maybe Vancouver could be one for the west side. And probably you could say Toronto or maybe Montreal for the, could be the other for the east. Because I think the only way that there was going to be a season this season is if the season does not start until Labor Day and have like an eight, nine game season and you play only teams in your division in a hub city here. Maybe you can play, uh, that's the other thing too, is how would you play the games? Like, would you have uh, back, yeah, you can almost have to think you could probably play two games Friday and two games Saturday somehow. I have a different, you know, locker rooms. That's, that, this is just my speculation at this point here and derive a schedule from that and then not too sure how they'd figure out Grey Cup if they were still to have it because you don't know about these restrictions and I know many states and Canadian provinces have their phases on reopening things and uh, definitely the last last thing is gatherings at sporting events and concerts here and and some provinces even all said outright that uh, hey it ain't gonna happen this year I mean, unless something dramatically changes, unless there's like a vaccine or effective treatment to this. You got, I had to throw in effective treatment because who knows if there maybe there won't be a vaccine. We might have to live with this. I know that uh, you can technically consider HIV and AIDS. I know it's caught from different activities, high risk. I'll just leave it at that. Technically, that could still be considered pandemic and it's been going on for over 30 years and there's no vaccine for that, but there's effective treatment. That's why I have to say that in my videos here, just so that we could still be waiting for a vaccine for decades. Who knows? But uh, that's where it's going to be last that leagues will be able to have fans again. And, uh, you know, this could also be a chance for me with the CFL to find a new business model as well, so it's not as dependent on fans here, but... Uh, you know, this definitely just keeps evolving here. I mean, I'm not surprised that the league looked for government intervention here. And I know Randy Abrogi, I mean, you have to play the worst case scenario if you're looking for funding from the government here. And, I mean, $30 million does seem like uh, what they want right away because the league hasn't got any revenue from uh, when pause button was pressed on sports here. And I know, for example, me as a season ticket holder here, they paused their payments for tickets here, and I definitely do not want to make any more payments to tickets here because I don't know if I'm going to be paying for tickets for uh, this season here. And I mean, who knows? I I might be leaning towards wanting a refund for this season and bring up next season if we know there is going to be a next season that fans be at it. Because what I did for my Roughnecks tickets here is that the NLL canceled the rest of the regular season here, and I only got to half of the home games that were on the schedule here before. And I'll also pause their season with everybody else here. That I was given three options here where I either was able to use my credit from this season to next season here, but the fact that we don't know if next season is going to happen and fans will be allowed at the game here. Then the other option was hold on to it, wait till later of the year, but then you don't get those extra goodies like food coupon or, you know, sports, you know, a flame sport gift card here. And the third option was just get a refund and my seat be released here. So I went for the refund because... Given what's been going on, and you know, it's like I could use the money now, and the fact that uh, I don't think I'd be worried about losing my particular seat in that case here. 
So I would almost want to go that way with the Stampeders right now because uh, we don't know what the future is. And, and that's why I made that last video. I kind of wonder, is the league's future in doubt if they don't get uh, government intervention here? And it sounds like that they need it if they were to supply this. But I can see the league's point on why government intervention is because of the restrictions that the government has put in place here. People can't, you know, go to the game or and all that. But uh, but it sounds like the Players Association have started their getting their say. I mean, it's it's not as open as transparent as the major leagues. You have to do some digging to find some uh, stories here. I mean, TSN brings some up and with their insiders and Three Down Nation. Those are usually the best sources to get CFL news before it goes on the league website because the league website makes it official here. And then obviously I just give my takes and opinions on my videos here. But uh, at least it's some encouraging here, but I still think it's going to be a Hail Mary about having a season here, given all the restrictions here. I know David Braley, the owner of the BC Lions, did say that they could still potentially salvage the season here because he does thinking, and I'm thinking too, that if we have no season at all, that uh, the CFL is going to be history here. And same with the Stampeders and all the other teams, and be a shame because this is this would have been their 75th season in Calgary here. And we're not going to have any official celebrations here, and that's probably going to have to get put off till next season, assuming we get through this and fans would be back at the game here. But what do you think about, you know, where the CFL's at right now? I mean, at least it's nice to know that the Players Association are now talking to the government based on what I'm seeing out there. And maybe the mood could change just a little that, uh, because even TSN, with their articles, say that there's some maybe optimism that there's still going to be some kind of a season, possibly hub cities. And I'm thinking the only way it will work is have two hub cities, west and east, and have all your west opponents play each other only, and east opponents play only, you know, after Labor Day, which seems to be that date where uh, you can have a half season and figure out playoffs from there. and. Grey Cup or a championship, but uh, it's definitely not going to be the the usual Grey Cup because it's not like tomorrow we're going to. And even then, it's you know going to have to still recover from this and say so we're all together. So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey, all the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, I'm also Doc Calgary Sports on my channel. I also do uh, personal logs, attempt to call me, and I also. The sharing experience, so I might say at a sport event or on the road there. So if that's all it sounds like, it'd be interesting to watch to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey. You know what you need to do. I also have my other social media links down in the description below there for other ways you can follow along here. So as I say, go steps go, and hopefully, uh, you know, maybe we'll still have a season. And I'll talk games and give game day posts. And my Calgary stamp here this month be abbreviated season three, hopefully. Bet you all that is, but, uh, you know, I've been making update videos on what I've been hearing on a lot of the Major League Sports here lately. Just something to look back on and ride the waves of emotions every week on all the ideas you've been hearing here. And something to look back on in retrospect there. So, as I say, I'll see you in the next video here.